Oh, yes. Pale blood. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. You need only unravel its mystery. But where's an outsider like yourself to begin? Easy, with a bit of yarn and blood of your own. But first, you'll need a contract. Hello everybody, I'm Colin from 6-Bit Games, and welcome to Bloodborne. Uh, yeah, we're gonna make our character now, it's gonna be fucking awesome. And we're gonna jump right into the horrifying, hellish world of Bloodborne. Now, for um, for full transparency, I've played a bit of this game already to try and get a feel for it, to try and get the mechanics down so you guys don't just see me, like, dying all the time. Uh, we're going for Violent Pass, by the way. I didn't pick that in my one, but uh, I'm going to pick it in this one because it has high strength. And strength is actually very important. Uh, yeah. If you're going for, um, uh, like, heavy weapons and shit like that, definitely choose strength. If you're going for light ones, choose skill. But um, other than that, it really, it's really up to you. Like You guys can choose whatever you want. I hope you guys enjoy this. By the way, you guys may know me from a, uh, from Dark Souls training, where me and Evan try to train Steven to be you know, good at Dark Souls. It's not going great so far, but we're trying our best. So I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a more experienced player with the Souls games by playing Bloodborne. So hopefully I don't die every two seconds. I probably will, but hopefully not. Good. All signed and sealed. Now, let's begin the transfusion. Oh, don't you worry. Whatever happens, you may think it all a mere bad dream. You found yourself a hunter. Okay, so we're in um, Yosefka's clinic, I believe it's pronounced. And yeah, welcome to Bloodborne, friends. This should be pretty fucking sick. Handwritten scrawl. Seek pale blood to transcend the hunt. Ooh, spoopy. Alright, let's, let's go. Now you guys have probably seen like the, the, the start of this a couple times. Maybe from other YouTubers or maybe from like... Uh, like, gameplay trailers and shit. So you'll know that there's an enemy down here that we're, like, kind of supposed to die to. But I refuse, and I'm going to beat the shit out of him until he's dead. Hopefully. Hello, sir. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay, well. It seems I was mistaken. That I will not be beating the shit out of him. And he will, in fact, uh, three-hit me. So that's awesome. <laughs> Oh, fuck. So now we are in the Hunter's Dream. And this is like our... For those of you that played uh, Dark Souls 2 and Demon Souls, this is the Nexus slash Medulla. This is where we will be leveling up, where we'll be teleporting to other places. 
this is our main hub area, and this is where, like, this is where the game is going to center around. This is how we're going to just do pretty much everything. So, we're going to go up here and get our weapons. We can have a saw cleaver, a hunter axe, or a threaded cane. Now, I personally like the saw cleaver, because it's a beautiful little weapon. Uh, then you can choose between a pistol or a blunderbuss. I'm going to go for the pistol, because I like the pistol. And then we get our notebook, which, um... You, uh... The notebook uh, lets you leave messages for other players, which is pretty cool. So now we've got our little saw cleaver going on. We've also got our pistol. I'm not going to fire that just yet, because bullets are scarce, and you need those things. So now, let's go beat the shit out of the thing that killed us. And here we are, back in Yosefka's clinic. Let's do this shit. Hey, you. Heard you were talking shit like I wouldn't find out. Fuck you. Bloodstone shard. Aw, oh, yeah. Blood vials. Always good. Now, unlike, um... Demon souls or dark souls or whatever, there's a dedicated healing button, which is now triangle. So, instead of pressing, like, uh, square or X if you're on, um, Xbox, uh... To use items, you can now use items with with square, and you heal with triangle. So you'll always have access to your healing items no matter what, no matter what which is very important because you're going to need a lot of fucking healing items in this game. As you can see, they've already given me a few just to try and get me prepared. So I'm going to try and take you guys through, and consider this kind of like a walkthrough slash playthrough, and yeah, we'll be hopefully not dying too much, but you never know in this game because it's... It likes to throw curveballs at you. And, um... I've only played a bit. I haven't played a lot of it. I only really know the first area off... Like, not off by heart, but, like, I know it. Enough to where I know how to get around pretty quick. After that, I don't really know. So, it, it's kind of like sort of a blind playthrough. Uh, after we get through the first area. Up until then, I'll just be helping you guys through the first area. So, if you have this and you're getting stuck, whatever. You can watch me and I'll show you where to go. And hopefully we'll have a lot of fun together. I think we will. Um, that sounded like it came from the bridge, didn't it? Ooh, spoopy. Alright, so this is going to be our first lantern. And these lanterns kind of work like bonfires, only they're very few and far between. Meaning that, like, you, uh, you find them usually after boss fights and shit. So it's very much like Demon Souls in that regard, that it's really hard to find those things. So you got to be real careful. Well, that was rude, sir. Don't do that. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take it through, nice and cautious. Oh yeah, uh, you guys need to. Um, well, you don't need to, but it's handy uh, when you're attacking. If you press L1, uh, just normally when you're doing it, just transforms your weapons. If you do it during combat, it does a special move, as you can see. So um, use that to uh, like break enemies' guards and shit. If you go up behind an enemy and hold R2, you get to do a visceral attack, which. Uh, it's like the new backstab mechanic, basically. Uh, I think we picked up some pebbles. Pebbles can be used to lure enemies. Oh, I think someone saw me already. Yeah, they did. How the fuck did you see me? Rude. Very rude, sir. How dare you. So we have molotovs and pebbles. Pebbles can be used to lure one enemy away at a time. Like this. You'll only extract one of them, which is good, because um, it means that like for crowds like this, you can... Uh, you can pick them off one at a time and not worry about getting overwhelmed. Let's see now. Hello. Goodbye. Yeah, to do your visceral attack, all you do is go behind them when they're unaware, uh, hold R2 to charge, and then press R1 really quickly while they're on the ground, and you'll do a visceral attack. And it does, like, as you guys saw, it does a huge amount of damage. And you can do those kind of attacks on, like, uh, bosses, but not in the backstab way. Basically, uh, guns, as you can see we have guns now, uh, are a new way of parrying. So, like, if an enemy attacks you, like that, you can go up and you visceral attack them. The only, like, it works exactly like the parrying mechanic in Dark Souls, where you have to do it just as they're about to attack you, otherwise it won't work. So, um, keep that in mind. It does use a bullet, so uh, be careful of using your bullets. Don't just, like, shoot them off enemies and expect to do a lot of damage, because, unfortunately, these like, the guns in this game 
are not powerful. They're just for parrying. So keep that in mind. Hello, sir. Goodbye, sir. Come on, fuckers. Oh, dear. Oh, fuck. Okay. Well, as you can see, you can get overwhelmed really fucking quickly in this game. So you gotta be careful about the kind of enemies you lure. I don't know how I lured three, but apparently I did. Okay, we're back. Uh, as you guys notice, I'm cutting out the loading screens because they're like 40 seconds to a minute long and no one wants to watch that shit. Especially me. I have to. You guys don't because I'm going to cut them out. So, be thankful, I guess. So, we're going to go kill all the guys that we killed already. I'm not going to bother with the backstab anymore. We're just going to go up and beat the shit out of them. Hello. Goodbye. Uh, come on, fuckers. Ah. Uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, this saw cleaver has a short range and long range. And the, short, the long range is good for uh, when there's lots of enemies. And the short range is good for when you're up close. So, hello, friends. No, no, no. Oh, God, please don't. Oh, fuck. Okay. See, I, I'm just being reckless at this stage. Which I shouldn't be. But I am. Try and get them on the stairs. It'll make sure that only one can come at a time. Hopefully. See? It's all about figuring out how to use the environment and your weapon like forms to your advantage. Like, long range is good for this kind of shit. Oh, you piece of shit. Did you just hit me with a shield? What a penis. Fuck you, guy. Okay, so yeah, we're, we're, almost, we're almost there, back to where we were, but... Yeah, like, as you guys saw where I died there, it's really easy to get overwhelmed if you're not careful, so... See, I was kind of, I'm trying, I'm kind of rushing through to try and keep this interesting and, and fresh and whatnot, because like I said, I've been through this area. I don't want to linger here too long, and I'm sure you guys have seen this area a lot from other playthroughs and other, like alphas and all this shit. So, like I said, I want to keep it short, brief, to the point. Kill that guy. All right, so here's three of them again. We'll see if we can go long range and kind of save ourselves a bit. Okay, that worked a lot better. So, use the weapon forms to your advantage. You see, the long range is slower, but it lets you hit more enemies and has a wider range. And that goes the same for all of the hunter weapons at the start. The threaded cane, the axe, and this, the cleaver. Each of them has a long range and a short range type thing. Um, as you can see, you can do special attacks, like transforming your weapons halfway through attacks, which let you hit more enemies than usual, which is nice. Hello, doggy. Uh, as in Dark Souls, when you're fighting the Capra Demon and pretty much anywhere else in the game, try and kill the dogs first, because Jesus Christ, those fuckers are fast, and they will wreck your day. He has my blood echoes. You see the way his eyes are glowing purple? That means that he's absorbed my blood echoes, and that I need to kill him to get my blood echoes back. And blood echoes are your new souls, basically. And, you know, souls are... I mean, blood echoes are nice, because they let you upgrade your weapon, they let you, um... level up, and... Yeah, and buy things. They, they work exactly the same as souls. So you need... What I've been picking up so far are blood shards, as you saw. And they um, they help upgrade your weapon. I think you need three for the first upgrade. Five for the next. Eight for the next. And then you go to, like, twin blood shards. Which I haven't found any yet in my playthrough. Because, like I said, I only did the first area. But, um... Yeah, so upgrading your weapon is important as well. It's almost as important, if not more, than just upgrading yourself. Oh, you fucker. Give me my health back. Uh, also, you notice what I did there. Even when enemies are dead, you can still... Um, you can still keep hitting them to get, regain health. Which brings me onto the regain system. Um, you'll notice when I get hit, a bit of my health turns kind of like an RNG color where I've lost it. And it stays RNG for a, for that, a few seconds. Um, and basically what that means is... Uh, if you hit an enemy within uh, a few seconds after getting hit, you can regain some of your health back up to where that orange bit was held. So if you got, if someone hits you with one attack and it took off nearly all your health, and you manage to just keep slashing at them, you could basically regain all of your health back, which is cool. And it, it encourages players to be more aggressive, which is what Bloodborne needs you to do because this is a much faster paced game. And now we're gonna try more gun parrying on this fucker over here. What's up, babes? You all right? Looking well today. Nice break. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. And you see, just as an enemy is about to attack, you have to beat the shit out of them. Long range. 
Oh, that was some baby. Hello. Goodbye. So yeah, gun parrying is important as well, especially for bigger enemies, because you really don't want to take those guys head on. Because uh, they can hit a lot harder than you. And when I say a lot harder, I mean a lot harder. Because they are fuckers. There's some nasty little crows over here. Go long range with these guys, because they can jump. Like that. Careful. They can take a lot of health off if they manage to get you in that little, uh, in that little jump attack, so be careful. Oil urns, basically, you throw them at an enemy and then you throw a Molotov and it does like twice as much damage, which is what we might be doing very soon to deal with some werewolves. And maybe even the first boss, we'll see. I'm going to get you guys up to the first boss for the first episode, uh, and then we'll leave it there, and then we'll, we'll kind of continue from there after. Basically, this episode is going to show you just like short, a shortcut to get to the first boss as well. So if you die, you have a way back, which is fine. Come on, doggy. Okay, uh, try, like I said, kill the dogs first. Because they are the worst little fuckers you will ever fight. Try and go long range if you can. And just stick to stick to being cautious. Don't go... like this. Do you see the way there's a lot of enemies here? I'm going to try and lure one of them. I've, tr I've lured the dog. Uh, and unfortunately, because I lure the dog, he, I think he, oh no, he didn't, good. Sometimes the dogs can lure, um, with their enemies, and he barks, so they're coming over here. Which, uh, is actually, oh shit, where's he gone? There he is, hello. Also, don't do what I just did, uh, keep an eye on your stamina. Because you run out of that, and you basically can't do anything, and you're, oh, you absolute fuckbag. Okay. Fuck you. Okay. Hello, Mr. Doggy Dog. Woof, woof. Right here you'll find some blood vials, always good. You can carry 20 blood vials and 20 um, quicksilver bullets. And later on uh, in the game I read, you can actually upgrade that. I haven't done it yet because I'm not very far in the game. But apparently you can actually have more, which is cool. Now as you can see, there are werewolves here and I don't want to fight them. Gonna have to. So we're gonna use our Molotovs because they're very weak against fire. Oh, you fuckers. Fuck you. <gasps> cheeky boy, cheeky boy. Fuck. Long range. Nope. Okay, I'm trying to be real cautious with these guys because there's two of them. Oh, you fuck. Okay. Oh shit! Okay, we need to we need to get get away. They're, they uh, these guys don't give up, so don't expect to just run away. Well, you usually don't. Are you are you coming? Oh yeah, there he is. Okay, there's there's one. It's not the one with the low health, is it? No. Okay, we'll try and dispatch this fucker as quickly as possible. Uh, basically what you want to do is get a few hits and then start dodging away with these guys because uh, they hit like fucking tanks. Okay, there's one dead. And the other one only has a tiny bit of health. That's good. Uh, they usually drop either blood shown shards or blood vials. The, star the shards are much better because they let you upgrade your weapon. Uh, but you never know with these fuckers. Where are you? Friend? There you are. Oh, are you stuck? Aww. Poor baby. Let me end your misery. What the fuck? You had more health than I thought you did. Well, okay. Now. Jesus Christ, what a wanker. Bloodstone shard, awesome. Alright, we actually have enough to upgrade our weapon. Which is what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you guys a shortcut. Because the first boss is up this way. So, um, if you come up here after we fought the werewolves, there'll be a guy, uh... There should be a guy, isn't there? Yeah. You kill him. You go through this little house here and you get to open up a shortcut back to that first lantern we were at. Which is great. Because, I'm not going to lie, the first boss, if you're not careful, he can effectively one or two shot you. So, be very careful. Be ready to dodge a lot with him. And, well, you'll see it anyway. I'll show you guys. Uh, it's, I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is. If you've seen the alpha, other people play the alpha or whatever, or... Even gameplay trailers they showed him too. But um Yeah, you'll see him. He's a he hits like a fucking tank. But he's real cool as well. 
I like him. I like his design. He remind he's very reminiscent of a Dark Souls one boss. Well, the one of the DLC boss for Dark Souls one, Manus. Very reminiscent of him. I think that was on maybe on purpose. Maybe it was like he's meant to be inspired by him or whatever. Well, but yeah, we definitely have enough to upgrade our weapon now. So we're gonna go back to Hunter's Dream. We're gonna upgrade our weapon, and then we're gonna come back and fight the first boss. So we'll have a lot of fun doing that. Okay, here we are in the Hunter's Dream. All you, go, if you want to upgrade your weapon, you come over here and use this fortify weapon. Yes, but so requires like I said, requires three for the first one, five for the next, eight for the next, and then you, and then you need like fucking twin bloodstone shards, which I haven't found yet, and apparently they're fucking hard to get. So that's great. So now we're gonna go back to Central Yarnum where we opened up our shortcut, and we're gonna take on the first boss. And oh boy. Okay, back in central Yarnum. Now let's follow that little shortcut I guys I gave you guys. We'll show you again real quick, going the opposite way, so you know exactly where to go. You kill the bad men. Kill this bad man. Kill this bad man. He this guy always drops bullets, by the way. So if you ever need to farm them, kill that guy. He usually drops about four, so you know, because you can run out. Uh, which, if you go over 20 or uh, bullets or vials, um, they'll get transferred to your storage. And so when you die, they'll automatically replenish. Uh, but, like, you can only hold 99 in your storage. So in the off chance you need to farm whatever, feel free. It's always nice. Let's actually pebble this guy. I don't feel like fighting the crows and him at the same time. Come on, buddy. Fight me. Oh, oh I missed it. Okay, come on. Hello. Goodbye. Oh, he's still a bit alive. Let's get him. Okay, now we go crows. Crow, remember, crows, long range weapon. Well, long range form of your weapon. Long range. You see, he was about to jump. Long range. Okay. So now, guys, we're going to go and fight the first boss. I really hope it goes well. Let's go. Hello, beastie. Okay, so like I said, you can parry him if you shoot him in the head. It is kind of like a 50-50 on whether a lot will work. It worked that time, which is good. Get us off to a start. Uh, but it won't always work. And you can't do it like after it itself. You have to like take a break with him. Oh, fuck. What the hell? Jeez, he like redirected himself in the air. What a cunt. Okay. Okay, so, let's go, buddy. Okay, I hit his arm so he kind of, like, limped for a sec. Okay, I think it's when he does that you can shoot him in the head again, but I don't know. We'll, we'll try. Whoa! Oh, he certainly didn't like that. Yeah, okay. So every time he uh, does that little red thing with his arms where he, like like, hugs himself, basically, then you can, um, then you can, uh, do the parrying again. So, as you see, I threw a blood vial at him, and now I'm going to throw a Molotov. And that does more damage because I threw a blood vial, I mean, a, um, an oil urn at him. So, we're going to do it again. This boss is, is, as long as you know what to do, he can be very easy. So, you see, he's almost dead now, because we've, okay, now he's ready to be parried again. There you go. Hello, sir. Goodbye, sir. He's also fairly weak to fire, so feel free to throw a Molotov in his face. And again. See? He's very exploitable, if you know what to do. Uh, one more. And now we'll go up and hit the fucker. There you go. And that's your first boss dead, guys, so... I really hope you enjoyed this first episode. Pray slaughtered. I hope you enjoyed the first episode, guys. Um, if you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, because there'll be a new episode probably within the next few days as well. I'm going to try and get you guys through the second boss. And, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.